Hey guys, so today we're going to be looking at this Squetch. Squetch. It's a wireless bridge. So basically, uh, we're going to try to run it from our house to the garage because we get no signal out there and we're going to see how this works. When you look at it, basically you open it up. It's going to have your manual or instructions. And it's going to have two bridges, one master bridge, one slave bridge. So we're going to look at what these look like. They are going to be set up that you can hang them up if you want to. So you're going to have this and this. Remember, one will be the master, one will be the slave. So one will feed the signal to the other. It will have some clamps in case you want to hang it up. It will have two ports. And it should also have two power adapters. So they should work through here. And here like this. Your wires in there to run it to stuff. So looks like it's pretty simple, safe, straightforward. So we're going to hook it up, see how it does, see what our signal looks like, and then we will see how well it does. And remember, this is a wireless CPE. See, it's telling you basically everything will just plug straight in. What's going to work is we're going to have set one of these up as the uh, master, one as the slave. You're going to have the POE running into the unit. And then you're going to have one of these, the master unit, will have the internet running from the router into this. And then they should speak to each other. But first, we want to make sure that we pair them. So we're going to take this piece off the back here. You're just going to push down on your tab like this. And then it should just snap off like that. Push down on the tab this way. And it should just snap off on both sides. Now, remember, one has to be the master. So we're just going to push down. So they're both going to look like this. And the way you set it up, one will be, whichever one goes to the A side, you see there's an A and a B right here. This says B. It's flipped to the B side, so this will be the slave unit. This one goes to the A side, so that's the master unit. So this is the one that's going to have to be plugged into the Internet. So we're going to pair them up first to make sure that they're working. So you're going to run, we're gonna hook both of these up. These are gonna be your power units. We are going to put the power here. We wanna to go to the POE, right there. Just snap it in. And then it will go into your LAN one line here. Right there, LAN one. So it just goes in. And we will repeat that with the other side here. And they should pair together. They're supposed to come pre-paired, but we're just verifying that. So we're going to go again, POE to number one, landline number one, just like that. So we got them both plugged in. They both came on, they run a test. What happens is they'll first come on, see there? It'll flirt flashing. When they're paired, they should both start flashing together. You gotta make sure that you make you put this in the POE side, because if you do have it in the LAN side, it's not going to uh, power on the unit. So it has to be on the POE unit. There it goes, they both got the sign. They should both be paired now. That, they're both flashing. So what you got to do is the master unit, you're going to run the internet from the router into it. Then it should bounce the signal to the other one. So as they're pairing, you should see this coming on like this. And then this will turn green after they're done. Right now they're still working. These will turn green and start flashing as they pair. Now, your numbers on the bottom won't necessarily be the same because they're a pair. You see them flashing. One's a three, one's a zero. They are pairing themselves, though. These are supposed to be prepared. We're just letting you see we run run the test so you can see as it starts getting ready. That one starts turning green. This one should also turn green in a second and start flashing. 
and that means they're ready to go. And we just have to plug the internet into the master and it should bounce the signal. We're just rerunning the test so you can see what it's supposed to do. Uh, we didn't get a good view of the lines coming across. So now we'll hook that up. So this is my master. We know this because it's set on A. So what you're gonna do now is you're gonna run your internet from the internet line here, the landline, to your router. So for us, that's right here. And it should be giving us a signal for internet right here. You'll see it bouncing right there. The landline is hooked up. It's running its test. It's pinging itself. It'll run through a series of tests, just like it would when you're hooking up the internet for the first time. So we should have internet there. Now you're able to, on your wireless bridge, you can plug something in here, or it should give you internet signal. So at first I did not have my signal like we have here. What I had to do was hit the reset button. You need to make sure these numbers are the same. I mistook the first time. When you look in the book, it does tell you make sure the lines are the same. Now you'll see our master, it's plugged in. It has its full LAN signal and it's bouncing the signal to the other one. You'll notice that when you look over here, it's not plugged into this one. This is your, your slave unit. This is your master. So the internet is runs directly into the master unit here but not into the slave. So it's bouncing its signal to this one. Just make sure these numbers are the same. You'll see we have full internet on both. So we're gonna take this out into the garage. We wanna make sure we had them paired properly. So the best way to do that is do it side by side. Cause if you go ahead and put this wherever you're gonna put it and it's not right, you're gonna be running back and forth to check your numbers. So I suggest that you go ahead and pair them up beforehand. And we'll remember this number is four in case it does change. Then you just hit your reset button until you hit the number four. This should be sending signal now to the other one. We're gonna go check it out. So another thing you wanna notice on here, you're gonna see that you have your wire sticking out. So you'll have little pegs right here. Once this is done and we're completed, you'll be able to put this on and slide this closed and you can hide the wires. This is just leaving these out right now while we're setting it up but there is a way to put those away. So we're gonna go hook this up in the garage. We know we don't have Wi-Fi out there. It just doesn't get through the walls because of all the wiring and the shielding in the garage. So we're gonna go ahead and take this out and see how it does. So now I haven't mounted this yet. Uh, went out, brought it into the garage. You're gonna see up here is my TV. Right now it does not have an internet connection. So uh, that's the whole idea of this, so I can get internet in my garage. I get very poor reception out here because it has the brick walls all the way around it. Uh, and it also has a lot of metaling in here. So it blocks a lot of the stuff so I don't get a signal. Now you'll just see, I plugged it in. When I first plugged it in, it's gonna run through the test just like it would on a normal router. I had zero bars. Now I have three bars here. It's not quite all the way full, there's one up here. So I've still got it, you see it's still set on four, right there just like the other one was. That's how we check our numbers. We know the other one's on four. This one's on four. We watched it go through the test. We got up to four, uh, three bars. Now, the other thing you can do, if you want to, you can plug directly in here. So I could run a wire from here to my TV up there because this does have the adapter for the TV. But for the idea of this, I wanted to uh, take this and try the wireless feature to see if I got internet on my TV make sure it's working. Plus the other nice thing about this is if you want, this is the only one you have, you have the main one plugged in your, to your router, you can take your second one and move it anywhere you want. If you have a shed outside, uh, but, as, but you have a plug in, as long as you have some place to plug it in, you can use this anywhere. So I can take this base unit here, the slave unit, move it from a bedroom, to the garage, to the shed, any place that has a plug-in that I don't have a signal, I can plug this in and take it with me. 
So this makes it really nice as far as moving it around. Now this won't be stay here. You can either mount it into the wall here, put screws, or you can take the metal pieces that they gave you, the uh, braces, and run it through here and mount it to like a pole or something outside. As long as I have an inner, uh, some place to plug this in, I can put this anywhere I want and I can mount it. But for me, it's nice so I can take it to different rooms or places that I don't have an internet signal. So now we're going to test it on the TV. We're going to see if we have internet. So basically, I'm going to turn on the TV. It says not connected up in the corner. So we're going to see if we can get the internet. So we went ahead and hooked it up. We didn't want to show our password, but you're going to see now we have internet in the garage. Before we showed you that it said no internet. What I did have to do, because I've not had internet out in the garage, and this is a Roku TV, I had to wait for the TV to update because it's been a long time since it's had internet hooked up to it, and there's been so many improvements and updates that it took probably about 15 to 20 minutes for the TV to update. But now you'll see I got internet, everything's updating. If we want to, we can go to here to YouTube. See, there you go. You see it's starting to update now. Uh, like I said, this TV's just not had internet hooked up to it for a very long time. Uh, the whole idea was to put it in the garage so while I'm working out here, I can listen to music or anything like that. And I had no internet. So it's been sitting out here for about a year. And now I finally have a way to have internet out here. As you see here, we did, uh, didn't want to worry about copyrights. So we went and did a search, brought up our own channel, of course, and different videos. You see, I can scroll through. I went from having no internet in the garage, which we showed you in the beginning up in the right-hand corner, no signal. Now we have, so here's some of the features we show you in the book that we didn't show you outside because we didn't have them hooked up. We do have cameras, but we don't have the wired type. You're going to notice that you can run your wireless router is run into your base unit like this. Is run into the little piece right here. But then you can also take your second line right here and run cameras into it. So uh, on the main unit, the master, I have my internet run in here, but this is my backup unit. So you're going to notice as it's hooked up, you're getting your Wi-Fi signal here running stuff. You can hook cameras directly up into this side and it will work just like it's supposed to. There are several different ways you can wire things up in here. If you look at the different ways, uh, you can always run your wire, your secondary unit. You can run a switch off of it, DVRs, monitors. So your main unit's gonna have the internet hooked up to it. The backup unit, you can run different things off of it. You can run See here, your, it shows the bat, the master unit. Also, you're using your Wi-Fi for your, a camera setup. So you don't have to plug the cameras into the master unit because it will have the internet plugged into it, be sending the signal out. But on the backup unit, you can run the camera into this. So there's a lot of different features if you read your book that you can set it up a bunch of different ways. We basically just showed you the way to hook it up for, to use the wireless point to point so that we would have internet in a different section of the house where we're previously were not able to get internet. Hey, we are back for our final wrap up and review guys. So the, this one here is the backup unit or slave unit, whichever you want to call it, uh, because the master unit is still plugged in. The reason why I like this and I got it in the first place is so I can take the backup unit and put it wherever I need an internet signal. If I need one down over the hill, I can take this uh, it will pick up the signal from the main unit uh, or master unit. That's what they call them in here. I call it the main unit or the backup unit, so you'll know what I'm describing. So I will get a signal running from the main unit to the backup unit. I wanted this one so I could pretty much move it anywhere I want. There is one section of the house, the front, front corner, I can't get a signal, and also out in my garage. So I will probably be using this to move back and forth as I work because I use my back, my main part of my house, my one corner that doesn't get very good internet, I use that for my office. So I will be able to use this in my office and then in my garage. So 
This unit is very lightweight. It weighs less than a pound. I'd say maybe half a pound or so, between a pound to half a pound. Very lightweight, so it's going to be easy for me to move it back and forth. You're going to notice here, there's a spot I showed you that you can hang screws in a wall to hang it up. Or if you're put, mounting it to a pole, you would actually be able to run these through here. I'm actually going to be using mine to take it around wherever I need the internet. So when you want to hide these wires, you're just going to take this like I showed you earlier, slide it down into place, and then it's just going to basically close, and it's going to hide your wires. The only reason you would need this open is if you need to reset it in here, change your uh, channel you're on, or if you need to plug or unplug something in here. But other than that, you'll just basically this will just stay in place. But like I told you, I will be using mine to move it around. I really like the fact that this thing is really easy to move around. It's really convenient. It's really lightweight. Uh, my initial setup uh, took a little bit of time because I did make the mistake. Uh, I thought these numbers didn't matter if they were matched up because I thought it was automatically paired. Well, it does tell you that they're automatically paired. Mine was not. Uh, that's why when I initially hooked it up, it wasn't quite coming on. So when you read the manual, it does tell you to make sure these numbers match. As soon as I matched up the numbers, it started working like it should have. Because originally, my main unit had green lines all the way to the top. This one did not. As soon as I reset it and changed the number, and I matched them up, I had full internet. I showed you the TV in the garage, which said it had no connection. After I hooked this up, I got connection. I was able to update my TV, update my channel, start watching it. So that's another really convenient thing to do. You're going to notice if you read your book, your manual, it has quite a different ways to hook it up. Like uh, you can hook this up and use the Wi-Fi part, but then they have to direct wire to like cameras. So you can direct wire cameras on one side while the... Uh, Wi-Fi unit itself hooked up to the other one. Uh, the main unit, you won't have to do that because it was the one sending out the signal. So your cameras can be done by a bounce via the Wi-Fi. So this has a lot of options, lightweight, easy to do. It is the SKU, SKUEC, I'm not exactly, SQUEC. Uh, it's a point-to-point -point wireless bridge. Uh, we're going to put the link for this in the description. Like, subscribe, give us a thumbs up. And if you are in the market for a point-to-point -point Wi-Fi bridge, this is great because it's wireless. So it sends a wireless signal back and forth. Really like this. Click the link, get you one of these if you need a point-to-point.